My favorite thing about Dune, well, really the Dune movie, halfway through the second book, I'm like, this is so stupid. But my favorite thing about the movie was the ornithopter. The way they did this kind of like high frequency motion blur, you have this oscillation that is so fast that it happens multiple times per frame. But as you could probably tell, this design is meant to mimic a dragonfly that also flaps really, really quickly. Okay, how fast does a dragonfly flap its wings? AI says 30 to 50 cycles, other things say 30 cycles. That means there is a full up and down oscillation within a single frame. Then we we need to take subsamples. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Specifically, I want to move the Z coordinate up and down to do these fast oscillations. An easy way to do that is by using a sine wave. So I'm going to make a driver to take the sine of the frame number, and you're going to see all of a sudden we have this fast oscillation. I want to multiply this frame number by two times pi because a sine wave has a whole period of two pi, which means if we multiply it every single frame, we get a full oscillation, and all of a sudden it looks like it's not moving. We can actually look at these subframes, which instead of going to frame 95 and 96 etc. We can go in between a frame and you can see we do one full oscillation in the uh, span of a frame. So what you're going to notice is every single frame basically looks the same such that if I look at this animation it just looks like a, a frozen frame. But what we can do is we can pick a number that's not as nice as two. So let's say 2.1 and all of a sudden you can see there's like motion now but it is you know it's deceiving. It's going faster than it looks like and even better you can just use an irrational number like e which is like 2.78 and now you're going to see all of this chaos. What you're going to see is we get this kind of like hum that's very similar to the dragonfly. For the object that is moving, go to the object properties, go to motion blur, which of course should be enabled, and take the steps and bring it up. I think it goes as high as seven. This will, instead of taking a frame and then kind of like looking at the next one, it will further subdivide this into uh, intervals that it will check. What you're going to see is that we get different results, even though it's the same motion. So I would recommend adding these uh, sub steps in. So now let's make the uh, dragonfly since we know what's going on. I have this picture of a dragonfly wing. I literally pulled it from Google Images. I know there's the texture a plain add-on or whatever, but I'm going to do this old school vanilla. For the image texture, we are going to use this dragonfly. Correct the aspect ratio, and we need to set it so that the boundary of this plane is closer to like where the pivot of rotation is. The easiest way to do this is you take it and you don't hit G because it will stretch the UVs with it, but you hit G twice in a row. So I'm going to do that on both sides so I don't have any extra geo that I don't want. Move the entire plane so that the pivot point is where it should be. And now if we rotate about the Y axis, we have this super simple setup. So again, I'm going to take the sign of the frame number to start. I'm going to do E times pi. I like the speed, but I don't like the amplitude. So instead of going up and down from here, I want to keep it a bit smaller. We can do that by taking all of this and multiplying it by like, I don't know, 0.3. So it's 30% as strong. And then for this object, I'm going to bring up the steps of motion blur calculation to seven. So there's so much motion blur that it actually almost works, even though there's like a black boundary. And we don't have to like cut around this, like use uh, the knife tool with K to kind of outline this. We can say we isolate the dark parts, the black parts of the image, and that is going to be our alpha. So I'm going to add a principled BSDF, use this as the base color, and for the alpha, I'm going to take this, I'm just going to convert it to a black and white image, which you can try plugging in, but what I recommend is just kind of like pulling these handles a bit more to get, you know, more fine control. So even something like this already looks quite nice. Yep, that looks pretty good. And then as for the uh, material insects, I don't know, in my mind, they're all super shiny. I'm going to take the specular, make it super reflective, make it super shiny. So I'm going to use this initial image texture to fake a a normal map using a bump node. This goes in here that you want to make really not as strong. Maybe the only other thing we can add is instead of just going up and down, maybe it should also rotate a little along some of the other axes. Copy the driver. I'm going to put it on the X axis. And the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to make the amplitude lower. You can see that extra rotation. I'm going to copy this driver, paste it into the Z. This one can be a bit stronger. And now we have our nice wing. To get this to be part of a dragonfly, there should be a sense of symmetry where this wing is copied over to this side but reflected. Move this to the side. Add a mirror modifier. And then because it kind of like reflects around the wrong spot and rotates as one unit and we want it to reflect across the Y axis, what I can do is I can add in an empty. That can be our reflection point. And now we have uh, both of these wings. If I change one, it will change the other. I can make a copy because dragonflies have two sets of wings. For this set of wings, I'm just going to take this and offset the period by pi because a full period is two pi. So if we add pi, it's going to be displaced by half. Do that for the X, the Y and also the Z. And now if we look at this, you see they're perfectly out of sync with each other. Very excited to see this actually. Was I talking shit or bullshit or does it look good? Yeah, I like the look of that. I think the only thing is it has to be way, way stronger. As mentioned, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. My website, www.cgmatter.com is made and hosted with Squarespace. Here you can see the uh, source material for, here you go, the things I used to make the website. I don't know. I like the design. And as for Squarespace, there are three big reasons to use it. The first thing I'm making great, great use of is Squarespace 
space like product integration, where in my website, I have this like Patreon clone-esque thing where you can get the blend files, the write-ups, and that is behind a paywall where the payments are processed through Squarespace payments. So they make it easy, everything's accepted. And then as for that exclusive area, I have like videos, images, whatever, and the asset browser makes it very easy to store and host those. And thirdly, when it comes to either designing or filling up sections of your website, there's now direct AI integration, which allows you to do these things all in one place without going to some other LLM. So make a website with Squarespace. And when you are ready to take that website and launch it, you can use this link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So the last thing, of course, is we need our Dragonfly. I downloaded it from Sketchfrab from uh, this dude who very generously made it available for free CC attribution. So this is literally as simple as appending in our thing if I can find it. Okay, there's the source. There's the Dragonfly. I want the object that is, I don't know, most of these. And then just get rid of everything we don't need, including the wings. Apply the modifiers. Boom, boom. Take all this. Control J to merge it into a single object. And now let's fit our Dragonfly with the wings. Fit for a king. I don't know Dragonfly anatomy, so this is probably very correct. I mean, that doesn't look too bad, right? And yeah, you know, this is a flying Dragonfly. An easy trick to get good lighting without an HDRI is in the uh, world texture. We have this thing called a sky texture, and we immediately get this simple world that we can control kind of the diffusion of the sun so we can make the light or the shadows super soft. We can make the sun itself more intense, different times of days, and in fact, the kind of conditions in which we're in. Take our camera and use a big focal length because that is how you would capture a dragonfly. And I'm going to do a bit of patchwork, you know, by myself, setting up the render scene and all that. But as for the idea of getting really fast but accurate motion blur, I mean, that is kind of the key idea here. This could have been condensed down to you can add sub steps to your motion blur and do motion that can happen within a single frame. But a nice story around it, a nice use case, who doesn't love that? Okay, thank you for watching. You can get the uh, blend file on my website, www.cgmatter.com and the Patreon.